Hey everybody! Well today I thought we could take a look at this brand new figure from Eagle Moss. This is another one of their die cast metal figures and uh, this just came out. Now this is April of 2022. I've had this on pre-order for uh, two, two months maybe, two or three months and this is Nomad, the infamous uh, probe, like robotic probe that was from the episode The Changeling, which I think was from season two. One of my favorite episodes and uh, I really love the way Nomad looked. So I'm assuming the whole figure is die cast metal. On the back here it has a few more things on here and I'll zoom in on it so you can kind of read that. So here we can see a close-up of the uh, artwork on the back here. Looks like there's some uh, dimensions. Gosh, this is like really super microscopic writing there. And um, yeah, just some dimensions of it. Over here you can read this. We'll take a look at the book that's on the inside, and it also shows some other stuff that's available. I think I paid um, $37. Oh, here's some interesting stuff, too. You can read there, and there, and right here. Oh, that's just some other stuff. But, uh, yeah, I think I paid $37 for this. I don't remember if I got a coupon on it. That might not be the full retail price. But I might have gotten a coupon on it. I'm not sure. All right, well, let me open this up and we'll take a look at it. Let's take a look at this book real quick. So I had a chance to kind of thumb through this. It's got some pretty interesting information on it. Um, just some stuff about Nomad, how the stand goes together. There's just some stats here. And some close-up pictures. Those are uh, computer renderings. Now, uh, it talks about the... Uh, the probe itself, here I'll try to zoom in on these things so you can kind of see it, and I'll try to get close enough that you can read it on a cell phone or a tablet. But it um, has some very interesting stuff, you can uh, freeze frame all of this. By the way, the guy that played Captain Roy Kirk, at least in the, uh, <laughs> in the um, picture, was actually the director of the episode, which I thought was pretty darn funny. I always wondered who that guy was. Here's a picture of Nomad on the transporter. There's some more stuff here you can read. And I'll just kind of zip through this because um, as much as I like these magazines, I think this particular one spends a little bit too much time talking about um, the episode. It kind of repeats itself. And, uh, I, you know, it, it mentions like two or three times about the plot of the episode. And I kind of wish they would have spent more time showing the actual prop. I know there's some really cool production... Uh, they're kind of like promo shots that they took of William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy with the uh, Mr. Uh, with the uh, Nomad prop. And uh, oh, here that's I'll pause it right there so you can read it. Uh, and and the, it would have been cool if they included those. Maybe talk to somebody who may have worked on the prop itself and explain what it was made of and you know uh, what it looked like on the inside. Maybe I don't know if those kind of pictures exist. And then. Um, you know, maybe explain how they made it move. I mean, I'm I'm sure we can all figure out that in some scenes, Nomad was suspended by invisible wires. And then uh, in other scenes, he was on some kind of a, a dolly or a, a cart with wheels. And they would wheel him along and just f film him from, the, uh, from about this point up. Here's some more stuff here. Some interesting stats. So, yeah, I, I kind of wish they would have... Uh, delved into that because see they're kind of talking about all the episodes where Kirk is against the computer which I do love those episodes and I didn't realize after, until reading this how many of those episodes there were there was a lot of episodes where it was Kirk against the computer or some kind of a machine <laughs> so uh, but this one is one of my favorites this one and my favorite episode of all time uh, out of I should say out of the entire uh, original series was um, Oh gosh, now I'm forgetting. How could I forget the name? Uh, Return of the Archons. That's the one I really... Oh, this one. I really like this one, too. Well, that is Return of the Archons. Oh, gosh. Okay, yeah. I really like that one because it's kind of creepy about Landru and then those hooded uh, those hooded guys with the, uh, the tubes that would uh, absorb people. You know, they walk around saying, you will be absorbed. <laughs> I remember it was kind of creepy. The whole uh, episode kind of has... That's another one that was really good, too. The Apple... Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of them where he was... Oh, yeah, that one was funny. Smoke coming out of his head. That was a good one, too. The Ultimate Computer. Yeah, I really like that actor that played Richard Daystrom. He's really good in that episode. Really good, actually. 
Uh, just some more stuff here. Sorry to kind of skim through this, but I don't really want to spend too much time on this catalog, but I, uh, I do want you guys to see what it has. That's another good one. So yeah, a lot of these were pretty interesting. John Meredith Lucas, uh, he was, I think he's the guy that uh, kind of gives the history of him and how he ended up taking over the uh, writing and directing uh, on some of the shows after the other guy left. But uh, yeah, I really do wish they would have shown more about the actual prop. So uh, just some stuff here. But you can just pause these real quick if you want to read all this. And then it's a relatively large book. They talk about a lot of different episodes. They kind of have similar plots, which, you know, that's typical of a TV show. In order to keep making these episodes, a lot of shows are kind of based on just the same four or five plots that they just do over and over. <laughs> but they just put a different spin on it. And because this show was a sci-fi show, they could kind of tackle certain political things that other shows couldn't tackle because this was... A science fiction show so they were capable of being able to uh, talk about things other shows weren't under the guise of uh, being a, a science fiction show which was pretty clever I think that was uh, Gene Roddenberry's idea all along so uh, yeah here they talk about the episode again they kind of repeat what happened in the episode it's kind of weird and uh, some stuff right there as well and this, oh, that's where they talk about how uh, that was director Mark Daniels who played that, whose picture that was. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. And just some other ships that they do. All right, well, let's take a look at the uh, model because I want to point out something real quick. Okay, so uh, I did run into a problem with this. When I opened the package, I noticed there was some pieces that kind of fell out. And originally I thought they were just leftover pieces of flash that came off the metal because they were silver pieces. But it turns out that they were actually the little, see that little, uh, the little dish right here that goes on the antenna? They had uh, all fallen off, and um, it was really frustrating. And so I managed to save, well, there was one. There was one on there. And so I managed to save that one and glue it back on. I just used some Gorilla Glue. But these other two were missing, which means that when they packaged this, those things fell off. So these ones here I actually made out of, uh, leftover model parts. It's actually a piece of, uh, I don't know, it was like a cylindrical piece and I just clipped it with a nail clipper to get a nice sharp edge on it, on that one and that one, and I'm going to paint those silver so that they'll blend in. But yeah, that was frustrating. And so, you know, it's the way they packaged it. This is the package and the way that it sits in this particular section right here, this is where that the head of it would be, um, it, it bumps up against the edges here and that's what knocked those things off. So if you get this, uh, be careful when you open it, and hopefully you'll have all three of your antenna uh, dishes in there, because I only had one, and it was really frustrating. So um, probably a, they probably should have thought of a better way to package this to keep it from moving around, especially because of how absolutely fragile those are. I mean, those are really, really, fr well, those are the ones I made. But see, that's what it looks like. So just a heads up for you, if you decide that you're going to buy this, be careful when you open it. Okay, here it is now all set on its stand. So, uh, yes, I managed to repair those things. I got them painted now so they they look silver and they blend in. I think that paint's probably still drying. But, yeah, they, they look good. I mean, at least I was able to uh, repair that. That's really frustrating that those pieces were missing and that one fell off. But, you know, it's like, that's kind of my luck with Eagle Moss, <laughs> as you all know. But, uh, anyway, yeah, this is a pretty cool little nomad I gotta say I think it looks really good it's pretty accurate to the actual prop starting down here with the little greeblies you can kinda see uh, those little grill type things or vents or something it has that one little greebly on the uh, the slope right there um, I'm not sure what that is I don't think maybe that was on it I don't know um, coming around here you can see that little thing that sticks out that is on the original and uh, underneath the, the uh, stand, you can see there's another grill. And uh, I think that's the same on both sides. Yeah. I thought that was only on one side. Now, this is really cool. Okay, so this is metal uh, down here. And I think this area is metal. I think it becomes plastic when you come up here. Near as I can tell. 
Uh, but you can see they actually painted in the grills. There's actually some yellow and red in there, just like Nomad's vents were. And this one's green. I don't know if the green is showing up. But there's green down inside there. So there's probably some kind of a insert that they have in there or a gel or something. And they do have the also the, uh, the little side ridges right here. If I can kind of get the light on it just right. You can kind of see how that looks. See, there it is whatever they made the original one out of. The original one had sheet metal on the sides. So that looks pretty good. I like that they did add the coloring inside the vents. There's the Greeblies on the top, which match pretty well to the original as well. Um, so, you know, they obviously, obviously kind of looked pretty close at it. This is pretty small, so it's not going to be easy for them to get the details super, super good at this scale. But I think it looks pretty good. There is the head section over there. It looks like it's about the right shape as well. And then uh, one thing though, I think they could have, they should have painted that silver. That right there, that's supposed to be silver on there. So I wish they would have uh, got that right. Up here is the uh, hood that goes over his head. Now this part here, this top section, um, I always thought that looked kind of like a drill head or something. Maybe that's what they used, I don't know. But anyway, that and this top antenna thing should be silver. Instead, it's more of like a gunmetal color. And then they painted that, that uh, section right there, that cir circular area, that's silver. It probably should be white. That's where uh, Nomad's phasers shot out, his little lasers, where he killed off all the red shirts <laughs> in that episode. But uh, yeah, I kind of wish they would have gotten that right. So it should be silver, and then those other things should be white. So I kind of think they messed up on the paint the paint color there, but um, other than that, I mean, it looks pretty good. That's what the top of it looks like. You can kind of see down inside there. So, yeah, I mean, this looks pretty good. I, you know, I actually think it looks really good. I kind of wish it was a little bigger, but, uh, you know, it's all right. The stand is decent. It's not one of those stands where it seems like it falls apart really easily. I've had a couple of these Eagle Moss stands where they, uh, mainly for the ships, where they have the uh, weight hanging off of one side really bad. Since this is just a big, tall cylindrical thing, they could use this more interesting uh, and easier kind of stand. And it just fits in there. There's no uh, nothing on there. And that's the bottom. So, yeah, it's just a little X. And it fits uh, crooked. It doesn't fit um, straight. You can get it back in here. Uh, if, you, like, if you look at it from this end, if you look at it straight on, see how this is angled this way? That's just the way it fit, and I thought maybe I had it on the wrong way, but that's not the way it fits. Either way, it, you're going to have it kind of off-center like that. Maybe that's the way they wanted it, but it kind of bothers my OCD. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is pretty decent. I think it looks okay. Apologies for the shaky camera work there. I've been running around doing a bunch of errands while I'm trying to film this video, and it kind of made me a little bit uh, shaky while I was trying to film all that stuff. But um, anyway... Yeah, this is a pretty cool little Nomad. I gotta say, I do wish it was bigger. Uh, you know, I, I mean, it, it would have been nice to have it a bigger scale. I think this is just a little too small. Um, but I do like the details that they've put into it. I think it looks really accurate and pretty, uh, pretty good. Uh, this incident with these antenna dishes was frustrating. Uh, that's something Eagle Moss needs to look into for packaging, especially when they're packing it in the package and you don't even get them included. You know, which means that they fell off before they even put it in the package to ship to you. So that's uh, even more frustrating. Um, I probably should have just returned it and got another one. But then again, probably have the same problem. But I think overall it looks pretty good. Uh, I noticed this kind of has almost a bluish, you can kind of even see it on camera there. It has almost a bluish hue to it. And I think it was actually just silver in the show. So their choice of colors was kind of weird on this. This gunmetal color going on up here and then that kind of bluish hue. But I think it looks pretty good. Um... A little, uh, a little sneak peek for you guys. Um, I have a video coming up soon. I managed to get a full-size uh, model kit of Nomad. It's something I've been wanting for a long, long time. And I found one. It's 3D printed. It looks really good. And I actually started filming that video about three months ago. But it's, I've been uh, running into problems for the electronics for it. Uh, which I'm hoping will get cleared up here very soon. And then once I do, I'm going to finally finish filming that video. And you guys will be able to see uh, a full-size Nomad model that I managed to get a hold of. And hopefully it'll be uh, lit and talking, too. So uh, hopefully that will be a thing. I don't normally do sneak peeks like that. <laughs> but uh, it's just, yeah, that, that video's been frustrating to make. 
But hopefully I'll be able to put that out there and you can see it. But in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are interested in getting one of these, uh, head over to Eagle Moss. They just came out. These are brand new. So uh, they are pretty cool. But like I said, just be careful of those little things. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for watching. I very much appreciate it. And uh, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. And I'll see you on the next video. So thanks again and have a good one.